I'm Bill Smith, but you probably knew that. Um, leader of the Bluebird Project since 1996, and it's now 2024, so do the sums. In 96 we went looking for the wreck of Bluebird, in 2000 we found it, in 2001 we lifted it, in 2005 after failing to uh, procure heritage lottery funding we started to rebuild it as a team on a voluntary basis, on our own time, at our own expense, with the help of industry. Uh, fast forward to 2018 and we took Bluebird out on the water. She was a long way from finished but she worked and we went to Loch Fad on the Isle of Butte with uh, the help and kind permission of the late Johnny Butte, seventh Marquis, who looked after us. And that was a massive success and we came back here and carried on with the restoration work. And the plan was always, and the agreement was, with the Ruskin Museum in Coniston, that Bluebird Project, being steeped in knowledge and experience, and having all the skills to take this thing from a sudden wreck up to an operational machine, would look after it. That was the deal. Um, and since 2018, we've been trying to get that deal formalised, such that Bluebird Project would take the boat out once a year, would display it for people on the water, for a whole new generation coming up, to inspire, to educate, to entertain and then for the rest of the year the boat would be on display in the Ruskin Museum in a purpose-built wing. Unfortunately we find ourselves in the rather sad and ridiculous position of having to take the engine out and disturb everything that makes this boat operational, every wire you take off, every pipe you take off, every bit of fluid you drain out of it, it takes it further and further away from the stable operable machine that we created. And this is for two reasons. One, because the gentleman who owns the engine will not let it fall into the hands of people that are inexperienced in its use, because it's a dangerous thing. And two, because despite every effort and bending over backwards, the Ruskin Museum have flatly refused to hold up their end of the deal. So we're in this position now where the team will shortly have to start tearing the guts out of this beautiful thing in order that we can ship what amounts to an empty shell over to Coniston uh, with no further involvement, kicked out with nothing and they will presumably do with it as they so choose. And it's very disappointing, it's completely unnecessary, um, but as the team I want to say, it is what it is. Over the years the team have become very adept at removing and replacing the engine. We have to do a lot of that to set up linkages and develop things. So we have a purpose-built frame that clamps onto the top of the engine with four pins. And that's the first part of the process. Um, beyond that, the next stage is to attach that to the chain block on the RSJ above the engine and uh, take attention. Everybody knows what they're doing here. It's like a ballet. As far as experience goes, we were taken under the wing of the original engine manufacturer 10, 12 years ago, and properly schooled in the ways of these uh, violent machines. In terms of the people that we've dealt with and the knowledge we've gained and all that sort of thing, it's absolutely second to none. People think this is like taking the engine out of a car. You take the engine out of the car, you put a new one in and that's exactly as it was. But it's nothing like that here because this is a completely unique machine. This engine isn't supposed to be in a boat, it's supposed to be in an aircraft. And although these engines 
are not exactly commonplace. There are a few about. But we have spent years integrating this one to live happily and work perfectly inside of a boat. That's not where it's meant to be. We've also had to look at ways to make it more environmentally friendly. Back in the day, it just threw all its waste fluids straight over the side and into the lake. We couldn't do that. We had to come up with ideas to make sure that all those things were trapped and kept and, and stayed on board, which again is not part of how that engine works inside an aircraft. So all this work over the years has been to integrate this into a complete system with the engine at its heart. And when you start to take things off, you just undo all of that. So having done a colossal amount of work over many years to iron out all of the wrinkles and get all of this working properly, and we inherited problems from 1966 and had to fix those too. It's truly tragic that we now have to dismantle all of that and take it all apart. With everything disconnected, it's then a case of lift the engine up and once everything is free, it's dollied across to the side of the workshop and gently lowered into the test rig, which is where the engine was developed away from the boat long before it was ever installed. The rig allows us to work on it and set it up, instrument it, fuel it and run it remotely. And that's where it lives when it's not in the boat. So it's a case of lower it down under there and lock it in and we can wheel that away and store it, run it, work on it or whatever else we need to do. And when it's out, it's out. And if somebody said, well, can you now put it back in? There would still be a lot of work to reverse what just happened and get it all stable and settled again. Trimming cap on. What have you been doing then? Cleaning the bilges out. Yeah. Making it nice and clean and tidy. Yeah. Remove, Tell, remove all traces of it, haven't ever run. <laughs> Tell your story about how you finished up here then. Cool. Short version. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a long story, have you got time for that? No. I'll get myself comfortable. You'd be lucky in there. So, <laughs> I'll fit perfectly in here. So, my story starts with a trip to Coniston with my parents on holiday. Discovered the story of Bluebird and Donald Campbell. That sent sparks flying, really interested in that. Came back, 
came back home, started Googling YouTube and saw the video of the crash, found the Blue Bear Project website, thought, oh, that looks interesting. Had a nice little read through the diary entries, thought, oh, that's, that's really interesting, I need to see that. When I found out it was in North Shields, 20 minutes from home, I thought, definitely got to see that. So from there, fired off an email and came for a day of visit and never left. <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, what was it, 14? 14, yeah. 16 years. 16 years, yeah. 16 years at Team Milner. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Good. Come on then, Rob. What's your Bluebird story? Short version. Ah, uh, well, joined in 2005, worked from 2024, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's certainly the short version. <laughs> short version, yeah. Did okay. All. Did you enjoy the bit in the middle? Oh, I loved the bit in the middle, the start and the finish, but uh, it was a bit of a bind, especially the finish. <clears throat> Spares department. Yeah, we're going to have to have a look through. Here's a little bit of attention to detail. There's a few Dymo labels around the cockpit, and we wanted to get them right. So first thing was, we sent for the correct Dymo machine. We know that's the exact correct one, but that takes half inch and quarter inch tip, which of course you can't get now. So we went back to good old eBay. Now this box in here is rolls of old Dymo tape of the correct size to go with the old Dymo machine. And that was just to make sure that it was perfect. Spare fire extinguishers for the boat. Oh, for when it runs? For when it runs, yes. It must happen. Alright, no, you can't be too careful. That's it. We should label them really. If some idiot will set one off. Tea time. You'll have a break when you're dismantling 27 years of your life's work. Yeah. How are you doing, John? Documenting with them um, all of the parts of Bluebird that we took off throughout the restoration. Documented, for example, in 07. And it's breaking my heart this because I spent so long doing it. Someone's going to sell all this, it's all documented for them. So when they auction it, they fling their pockets and the work came. You're saying your, your Bluebird project history in very short version? Well I was painting that ceiling over there, looked in here, when I 
my mate said, do you want to go and look at the boat? <laughs> and the boat was the bluebird. How long was that? Five years ago? Something like that. Uh, yeah. So there's little bits of me in bluebird. Still? I'm still a dead one. Oh, I can't remember me, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to the next chapter. Alright, we'll see what's next. Yeah. I do want to hurry up. Bluebird story, short version. Great fun. That's a short version. Nobody will not manage a short version. Blue Bird Story, short version. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to work on the old girl. in there? Oh yeah, loads. <laughs> <laughs> just like being young. Are you, you finished off how you started? I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's one of the first jobs we give you, is crawling around in there. It's all come full circle. I've already gone down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been shoved down the drain. Really.